Hello and welcome to the Pick Last review of Yakuza 0, giving you the average gamer's take on this prequel to the Yakuza series. There's bound to be a lot of action in this one, eventually. Yakuza 0 was released in Asia in 2015, but it wasn't released in North America until January 2017, which is why we're just getting to it. Full disclosure, I wasn't very familiar with the series before playing this game. I'm sure familiarity with the characters and locations would help a bit with the enjoyment, but it isn't necessary. In this game, you play as Kazuma Kiru and eventually Goro Majima. It starts in 1988 with Kiryu, a Yakuza for the Jojima family who is collecting on a debt by roughing up his mark. So we get straight into the action right away, right? No, it's a cinematic. You don't get to control Kiryu yet. In fact, you don't get to control him for quite a while. Most of the early game sets up the story, which means a lot of talking, and if you don't understand Japanese, that means a lot of reading. Now, if you don't care about the story, you can skip most of the cinematics, but even that may seem like a chore. Consider this. You start off with this opening cinematic that we've been watching with its animated dialogue, which you can pause and then skip. And that takes you to this conversation, which is not animated and they just kind of stare ahead looking forlorn. You can pause and then skip this too. Which takes you to the opening credits, which you can then pause and skip. Which then takes you to this, which you can only skip one page of typed dialogue at a time. And then you can move, so you can run up the street and, oh crap, it's another cutscene. And it's another where you can only skip one page at a time, and sometimes it makes you wait until it shows a certain amount of dialogue before allowing you to skip it. But hey, then you get to have your first fight, complete with a tutorial. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Well, that's over. Time for another conversation that introduces you to your friend Nishiki. You can pause and skip this too. But that'll just take you to another page-by-page -page conversation. But hey, once past that, you can move on your own, right? Uh, no, not really. You've got to follow Nishiki and continue your conversation. And he walks slowly. And you can't skip this part. Eventually, you get to another page-by-page -page conversation that leads you into a fight with a pair of drunks because they're in your way, despite there being more than enough room to go around them. It may feel like it's badly shoehorned in just to teach you about the heat gauge, and it is, but you don't care because at least it breaks up the monotony. So then there's more page by page talking, and now who the hell is this guy and why is the only audio from him weird noises? And then, and then, and then... Now, to be fair, the story isn't bad. It, it's just not well paced at first. The guy Kiryu was roughing up at the beginning turns up dead, and Kiryu has been framed for his murder, seemingly by a lieutenant in his own Yakuza family. So he sets out to clear his name by fighting. And karaoke? And dancing? And pool? And darts? Bowling? Mahjong? Shogi? Batting cages? Okay, so once you get past that opening hundred minutes, there really is a lot to do, although it does help if you understand the rules. Ah, <sighs> Mahjong is not my friend. You can even go shop in a boutique or visit um, a uh, place to watch videos. There are plenty of side missions you can go on, which vary widely from helping a kid get a video game, to stepping in to produce a TV show, to convincing a schoolgirl to stop selling her underwear. Yes, that's a thing. Both of your characters have three basic fighting styles and one secret one. Each of these have advantages and disadvantages, and are represented by a different color. You earn money through fighting, and you can use that money to improve each of your individual fighting styles and add more moves to them. As alluded to earlier, while you fight, your character builds heat, which is represented in the three bars below the health bar and match the color of your current fighting style. With enough heat, you can perform special moves, including finishers, and there are quite a variety of these. Health doesn't replenish automatically, 
so you'll need food to replenish it. Luckily, there are plenty of stores around that sell food and other boosts that you can carry with you and eat if you're about to die. Or if you just want a boost outside of fighting, you can visit a restaurant and buy a meal. Throughout the game, you'll meet people who you can become friends with. You just have to learn what it is they want, and just keep on doing that every time you see them. A lot of them will tell you what it is. There are vending machines littered throughout the city called Dream Machines, and they cost different amounts. Spending your money at these will sometimes give you a useful item. But not always. Being 1988, there are phone booths scattered about. This is where you save your game and also store inventory items you don't want to carry around with you. I just didn't happen to have any on me when I did this. The graphics aren't groundbreaking, but they're good enough. There's a combination of grittiness and neon flash that works for it. You get the standard three difficulty settings to choose from, and it appears that you'll meet the same number of enemies regardless of the difficulty level you choose. They'll just be easier or tougher to take down. There were some areas that I personally could barely get past on easy, but most of the time I was doing fairly well on normal. But as usual, your mileage may vary. In the end, if you're already a fan of the Yakuza series, you'll probably like this one too. Newcomers may want to skip it unless they don't mind doing almost nothing for the first hundred minutes, but if you can get past that, it does in fact start getting better. If I have any complaint about the game after that point, it's that it's got the opposite problem. Getting randomly attacked on the street starts to feel like it comes way too often. Although, you can usually outrun them if you want, but then winning a fight is always free money. If I were to rate it on a scale of 10, the early part of the game would be a solid 1, while after that it goes to an 8. So on average, I'll give it a 4.5. Unless you're a diehard Yakuza fan, rent before you buy. Thank you for watching my review. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, and while you're at it, click subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. And check out some of my other videos while you're here. We'll see you next time.